Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we will be discussing about the third problem of today's weekly contest. Check if there is a valid partition for the array. The problem states that you are given an array nums and you have to partition this array nums into contiguous one or more contiguous subarrays. Now each of these partition would look in one of these three ways. The like partition can contain exactly two equal elements, partition can contain exactly three equal elements, and partition may contain exactly three consecutive increasing elements. Okay, and if you are able to partition this subarray into like this valid subarrays one, uh, and you have to return false, uh, you have to return true in that case, otherwise, you have to return false. So, the problem is basically you have to part whether you can partition this array into contiguous subarray which is which follows one of these three conditions so how to solve this first of all let's just try to mimic whatever we are given we are given these three condition okay so let's see what happens after we apply any of these conditions so for for example let's try if we apply first condition here because we can see it is applicable here we can remove this as one subarray right so after removing this as one subarray, what you re what you will remain? You remains with uh, a array which have size less than the original array, and you what you have to find? You have to find again find whether this array can be divided into contiguous subarray such that it is valid, right? So originally in original array in the entire array you have to find whether you can partition this array into valid subarrays or not. Now, once uh, once you remove the like one part from the array, you are left with a smaller part of the array, and you again have to answer the same question: whether you can partition this smaller array into contiguous subarrays or not. So, hope you can see the recursion here. So, whatever you have taken previously would not matter afterwards. And you just have to answer exact same query that you are answering on the bigger array. So let's just try to formalize it. So let's say f of i denotes that uh, what is like whether after index i the array is valid or not. So what we need to find, we need to find is f of zero. Basically, we need to find whether after index zero the array is valid or not so basically the entire array is valid or not now at index 0 we can apply only one of these three conditions right there is no other condition that we can apply here so we can try all the three conditions one by one let's say you apply the first condition here and you see that okay first condition is valid so now you take this and now you will find out okay what like for f of 0, you will find out whether f of 2 is valid or not. Basically, after index 2, everything is valid or not. That is one condition. Second condition, you will try to apply the second condition here. The array contains exactly three equal elements, and this is also applicable here. So you will take this. Now you will see that, OK, I have taken this. Now what is remaining? Remaining is this piece. So whether this is valid or not. So for that, you will just call f of 3. OK? and third condition you can see it is not applicable here like they, you can't actually form a subarray which contain three consecutive increasing elements starting from here so you will not like third condition is not applicable here so if any of these f of 2 f of 3 any of these return true f of 0 will be true right so basically f of 0 is trying every possible combinations and seeing whether it is possible or not so if f of 2 is possible it means that after taking out the first like first two equal elements we can there is a way to partition the rest of the elements in a valid manner so therefore the entire there is a there is a way to partition this entire array into a valid manner and hence f of a, f of 0 would be 0 so hope you get the point like if any of these conditions would be true the final answer of f of 0 would be true so what like the pseudo code would look something like this so what we will do we will initially initialize the answer with false okay now we will try each of these conditions we will see whether there are two equal elements exist if it exists 
then we will just query f of after index plus 2 which if it is true we are doing a or operation here that will actually make it true so or will be true if either answer or this will be true so basically or is 0 or 0 is false otherwise everything is true so if you if you do 0 or 1 or if you do 1 or 1 or if you do 1 or 0 everything is for true so in a way we are just seeing whether this is true if it is true answer will be true then if there is existed three equal element we will try f of after index plus three and just or it with answer and then we will try if there are three consecutive element exist and again we or it if after this uh, entire exercise answer will contain either true or false it will contain true if any of this after index plus two after index plus three after index plus three will be true and finally you will return answer from here so hope the solution makes sense let's just quickly look at the code to make it more clear the code is exactly similar to how we have discussed so again one more thing uh, we have to memoize this because to avoid calculating the same index again and again so for example you can see in this exact question uh, in this exact state we are calling f of index plus three two times so it might happen that we can do recalculations so to save recalculation we can just store f of like the value of f of i in a array and you reuse it so now we have like we are maintaining this dp array which would be either minus one true or false like zero or one so these are the three possible values initially we are filling it with minus one now we as mentioned in the pseudo code we are just doing this exact thing that if there is two equal element two equal element means the there should be two element and those two element are equal there are three equal element there should be three element and those three elements are equal and if there exists three increasing there should exist three numbers and those, those should be increasing so if any of these is valid would be true answer would become true and what this is what we have written and as you can notice we are putting it as a reference so whatever we put in the answer will go to dp and dp if answer is not minus one which we have initialized initially so we will just return answer basically it means that we have calculated this particular index already before so hope you get the solution if you have any doubts in this problem please post them in the comment section below i will be able to answer and i will see you in the next video thank you